Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Regaton. Let's begin exploring the Dark City. The corpses smile at you with warmth and whisper quietly. It is over for you. Join us. Hamstrung. Your tendons have been carefully cut with a thin and sharp blade in order to cripple you without completely robbing you of the ability to move. Dark and Eye. You can feel something crawling inside your eye. You've lost most of the vision in it. Deformed Bones. Your bones have deformed, curved, and misaligned, making your movements clumsy and your body feel alien. A Hundred Wounds. Your body is mangled by cruel torture. You are on the verge of death. And Agony of Flaying. Something has upped your skin sensitivity 100 fold. Even a slight breeze now causes you searing pain. And some pretty nasty debuffs. Though my primary stats are still pretty solid. Keep your wits about you. But they did a good job of showcasing some of the tortures Jukari can inflict on you. Because that is their whole thing. Making other creatures and themselves suffer to keep Slanesh at bay. They try to out-access the Goddess of Excess, or God of Excess. Uh, these corpses fell down here from above. You hear them whispering about the beauty of their long descent, and the cruelty of the impact that broke their cold bodies. Hands off, that corpse is mine. Ugly Beggar. It is not impossible to identify this horrendous spawn dressed in rags as a human being. Or rather, a genetic anathema descended from human beings. The mutant's hideous appearance is complemented by brutal scars and a partially flayed face. You seem to have made an equally poor impression on the wretched beggar. He sizes you up and rasps, You look like Groxpat. How are you still breathing with wounds like that? The beggar's features are appalling to the point of being too offensive to look upon. I am in need of help. The mutant arches an eyebrow in bemusement. Really? A gripping tail? And why should I give a crap? Perhaps we can strike a deal. You want to trade? I've got things to trade. Vega lifts his rags and you catch the dull glint of a pistol handle. What have you got? Apart from your innards, or whatever that thing is that keeps trying to fall out of your gut. Offer him a stimulant. Are you in the mood for recreation? With a crooked smirk, Mutant grabs the injector. Oh, a combat stimulant. The things you see when you use it. It might kill you, sure, but it's worth it. We got a beggar's weapon. Alright, I'm begging you. I need shelter and the assistance of a healer. The beggar looks at you skeptically, thinks for a moment, and then nods. Fine. Well, should help a hapless soul in this accursed place, if not another hapless sap, right? Come, I'll take you somewhere safe. He beckons you to follow him. I had a feeling. That was a trap. Then something in his wrist clicks, and a long blade coated with something foul thrusts out of it. A moment later, the blade sinks into your flesh. You do not feel any pain, not yet at least. You merely watch in surprise as a spray of crimson fans through the air. You do not know when your hand sees the beggar's throat. Your fingers clench around it of their own accord. The mutant's eyes go wide, and a rattle escapes his reeking mouth. He dies before he can wound you again. You force yourself to release your grip on his crushed larynx. The pain finally reaches you through the veil of adrenaline, but the sensation is hardly shocking. What is another wound to you when your body is already suffering from a hundred just like it? Did I get a second beggar's weapon? 
Oh, yeah, my boots. Oh, these guys probably have my equipment. All right, we need to start killing. Killing these guys, I think. not Doral. Who if not me? <laughs> On it. I'll see to it personally. It's as good as done. A multi key. Uh, we want to keep that knife in a melee weapon. I always have a backup plan. I really was just putting them out of their misery anyway. And whatever the dead have, I take it. Who, if not me? I'll make it happen. Go. Oh. Are the contents of the injector bubble playfully? As if urging you to find out whether the liquid inside is poison or medicine. A blasted Voigtveer. Kill your people, tore down your banner, replace it with his heretical rag. Oh, Gladiator's Healing Kit. Restores Laura Xenos. Oh, wounds. Removes bleeding, burning, and toxin. Heals one fresh injury, or if none, one old injury upon a successful Medikai test. Yeah, we've seen all that before. Uh, can I use that, though? I do have an injury, and not having that injury would be a... Nice little bonus. Uh, you find nothing that could be of use to you. I always keep my options open. That is a shame. Ah! Ah! On it. Ah! Oh! I always get the job done. All right, more injectors. Bizarre. Always keep your eye on the prize. You surrender to the cough and lie down. It'll be easier to breathe and your lungs will stop burning. out of his misery too. If they're prisoners of the Jukari, then this is I a better better fate for him regardless. He's as good as done.
If it is funny, the Jukari are more the direct descendants of the ancient Eldar than the Eldari are. I feel like people typically see the Eldari as the main Jukari is faction, there money but to they, be made? Uh, they actually dipped. They got their craft wards and left before the Empire fell because they saw what was happening. Uh, the Jukari... So the uh, ancient Eldari Empire fell because... Well, they birthed Slaanesh, and when Slaanesh was born, the Eye of Terror opened up and consumed most of their central worlds. And uh, Slaanesh was born because the Eldar had had a empire for like 60 million years. And they started getting into more and more depraved stuff. They had murder cults, torture cults, pleasure cults. You name it, they had it. It was an empire of excess. So the god of excess was born. But before that happened, the craft orders left, and the Exodites were already on their planets. They had left before that. And the Jukari only survived because I think they were already in the webway. Uh, Kimura, the Dark City, is located within the webway. Who so they were cut off from the warp me? when it happened. Oh. That also means that they are direct descendants of the ancient Eldar Empire. And it's still heavily into the whole depravity thing. I'll make it happen. Slanesh at bay by trying to out excess the god of excess. There's so many dead people around you. Hell, it must be Void Fear. Darn him for what he's done to your crew. In a pleasant voice, the strange device invites you to put your hand in its depths and press the activation button. Seems like a bad idea. And it looks occupied already. An enormous eye stares at you through the glowing portal. Or rather, the portal is the eye of something enormous. And it's small, patiently waiting for you to step inside. I beg to differ. I'm sure you've got something for me to take. At the very least, your life. On it. And this is a mercy killer. Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. You fool. You have a death wish. That's why they came here, to gut people like us. So I'm gonna try and sneak past, maybe... I'll tell you not to let them see you. They're hunters, darn butchers. You gotta creep along, stick to the shadows, go around. And the chasm, you can get in anywhere. Keep your wits about you. This fresh corpse has your face. As killers are standing nearby, you'd better steer clear of them, because they have already succeeded in killing you once. Oh boy. Man, I'd like to get over there, but... Definitely can't fight them yet. How about these guys?
The barking of weapon discharges becomes Theodora's disapproving grumble. You consider that to be the face of a rogue traitor. Always keep your eye on the price. Your brave enforcers spend their every waking moment trading. After all, Voidfair could return at any moment, trying to take over your ship again. I always keep my options open. Not sure if we could go, or if we should go this way first, but I don't think we can make it past the Ikari over there. A quick save. I'm also going to swap out that for that. I have a feeling the next fight will be my last. Pass me that stimulant. We're sure to die sooner or later, but what of it? That's life in the spires. R. Enough. You said we were brothers in arms now. Shut up. It's your initiation. Trickers don't let weaklings in. Some initiation. The poor sod is hilarious. Malice and his servants. The den you have found yourself in is filled with a heady with heady smoke, sorry. And the walls are lined with living shadows. The center of attention is a snake like Xenos. He is engaged in conversation with a pale, hairy looking Drukari and pays you no mind, much like everyone else in here. This particular breed of abominable Xenos is unfamiliar to you, but we have fought them several times, so that's not true. But its appearance alone speaks of a vicious nature and inborn wickedness. Survey the room. Everyone gathered here is armed. They all bear scars, some even have fresh wounds. You notice a few humans among the Xenos. They clamor in a mishmash of tongues, and their laughter rings with lunacy and bloodlust. The air is thick with an all-pervading sense of doom. Your train out has not failed to notice that virtually everyone in this place is under the influence of some substance or other, and powerful ones at that. It seems you have wound up in a narcotics den. Observe the scaled Xenos. The leader of this gang is powerfully built. His scaled hide is reinforced with engraved metal in several spots. His long tail coils around and around as a snake-like head sways gently from side to side. The Xenos is enjoying a state of blissful relaxation. His companion, the god Drukhari, is looking at him obsequiously. Her entire body is adorned with hundreds of embedded steel beads and thousands of red injector marks. Address the leader. May we speak. The snake-like Xenos either fails to notice your presence or is simply ignoring you. Iridescent eyelid membranes slide over his eyes, momentarily shuddering them. No doubt a telling look among his kind. Without deigning to look at you, the cadaverous Yukari mutters. Malice wants you to disappear, pathetic whelp. Address the scaled Xenos. You're a Malice, I take it. A serpentine head turns to you with inhuman fluidity, his forked tongue tasting the air. I am Malice. You are an inconvenience. Get lost, or you'll find out how Malice deals with inconveniences humanly. I don't think attacking him is the right call. I require aid. I am wounded. What makes you think I care? No. Don't answer. I don't care what makes you think that. I can pay you handsom handsomely for your assistance. You have nothing. to waste my time. Xenos keeps his attention focused on the Jukari, but his scaled fingers holding an elegant looking injector clench in displeasure. 
He speaks slowly and indolently, like a snake about to enter formation. I see. He gestures with his fingers imperiously, as if dismissing you. The motion is slow and full of sweet sluggishness. I step away from the Xenos, at least for now. I always have a backup plan. I don't think attacking him is going to go well. They were tough when I had all of my equipment and party, so I'm not going to try and fight him with a knife and a, a last pistol. Let us not dawdle. No, put it back. Don't pull anything out of me. Relax. The Sawbones knows what he's doing. Right, Sawbones? Keep your wits about you. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> Master, could you spare the last few drops of your stimulant? Is there money to be made? Please leave me in peace, Strongmaster. I'm not stealing or begging. I'll just sleep here for a bit and be gone. I always keep my options open. Let me talk to Malice's servant separately. I saw everything. You're cheating. You scum. I knew you could not be that lucky. Let's keep playing, shall we? The fourth player is out, and fortune is smiling upon me. A gruesome blow has caved in the gladiator's skull, but surprisingly, he is still alive. Congratulations? I always have a backup plan. Success is the only outcome I accept. Nice. The Amnesty has power is such that his tech litanies subdue even the twisted spirit of the Xeno machine and force it to operate. But what does it do? I'm wasting no time to approach the scaled ringleader of this rabble. Xenos is clearly more comfortable now. The sleepy torpor induced by the low temperature has been replaced with the languid ease of an undisputed leader in his element. It can... So I guess if we would have offered our services, he would have asked us to fix that. Uh, the convector has been repaired. Help me. Why should I? Malice looks at you with contempt. Convector is fixed already. What's the point in me helping you? The little strength you had left in your body has run out. You collapse to the floor. The darkness that nearly extinguished your mind permanently envelops your vision once more. With the drumbeat of your heart, you hear Malice's voice from somewhere far away. Fine. Patch up the human link. He's proven to be more useful than the rest of you put together. Heck yeah. Sensation slowly returns to you. Your body is still in pain, but you're no longer on the brink of death. Your wounds have been crudely closed with metal clamps, and your throat is pocked with injector tracks, as though you've been wearing a neck pillow of needles. The one who rendered this first aid to you was certainly not a qualified Turrigan, as someone who would typically be permitted to minister to the person of the illustrious rogue trader. It looks like you're back with us. I don't know whether to offer my congratulations or commiserations. Skelzinos looks at you without the slightest deference. Well, thank you for your help. I do not want your thanks, human link. You earn back every stimulant I spent on you. As soon as you stand up, you're seized by a strange sense of unreality. It is as if you were still there in the wicked darkness, and everything around you is merely a twisted mirage. Doubt seeps into your mind like a poison, 
something gets contact with your body. You have to make a deliberate effort to hold on to the thought that you are you. What? Is your mind maggot giving you trouble? I saw it latch onto your spinal cord when you were being patched up. A fat, well fed grub it was, with lots of teeth. It's dying now. They have a short lifespan. That means its poison is especially toxic. You lose touch with reality from time to time. And when the mind maggot dies, the final dose of poison will make you think your body is not your body at all. And then your heart will just stop beating. Mind maggot's agony. A dying parasite in the rogue trader's body that is poisoning his mind with its hallucinogenic toxin. I could have pulled that thing out of you, of course, but I thought, why should I? Consider it a guarantee of your gratitude toward me. When you've earned your healing, I'll release you from it. The lipless mouth stretches into a bloodthirsty grin. Or you can reject my generous offer and look for help elsewhere. Have you heard about that humanling that's always hanging around the gate to the anatomical opera, gasping for breath, and begging the homunculus to save her? She can't breathe normally, even the way she says her name is funny. Jai Haidari, as if she's about to suffocate. Uh, who are you? I am Malice, and the rabble you see are my shriekers. We are gladiators, the bleeding meat of the Fatal Thirst combat arena. We are the beasts who go out there to kill and die in glorious deaths, the entertainment of the Dark City. And this den is our pleasure ground. Where am I? The snake-like Xenos hisses in satisfaction. Kimura, the Dark City. The underside of existence. The realm of the Jukari. You heard of it, humanly. Why did you decide to help me in the end? You're a cocky whelp, a feeble like all members of your race. Your cockiness has not got you killed yet which means you must be someone important, and you might be useful. What is a mind maggot? A kind of translucent slug. It is a parasite that can only be found on this side of reality. Mind maggots feed on your memory and they inject toxic hallucin uh, hallucinations into your mind to stop you resisting. Yukari can train these creatures and use them to show their victims devious mirages. What do you want from me? Kill for me. Go into the mangled sector and find a freak called the Commissar, one of your kind, and spill his guts for me. Do that, and you earn my favor. And in the chasm, that counts for a lot. Who is this Commissar? A prisoner of the Jakari who thinks too highly of himself. Instead of dying in the arena without any fuss, he is hiding, gathering other slaves of your race around him, and making pathetic plans to get his revenge. And many of your kind are listening to him. See how few human link shriekers there are? They used to all come to me, but now they listen to the Commissar and no longer come. The Mangled Sector. What an off-putting name. It's an off-putting place. It's the base of the spire in which we live. Kamara stitched together from scraps of various dimensions, and in the Mangled Sector, the seams are starting to rip. Space is collapsing in on itself, and entropic radiation is off the scale, spawning all kinds of abominations and the sector itself was slowly but surely turning into nothing. Some unhinged humanling went there recently. What do they call him? A Versorian. He was old but strong, and too loud. His visit probably stirred up all the freaks. He should be more careful and quieter than he was. You'd have to be insane to set foot in a place like that. Insane, or an outcast like the Commissar, hiding from the hunt. Or you. Why do you want me to do it? I don't want to drag my whole gang into the mangled sector. The place will kill off three times more fighters than the Commissar's crew will. That means I need to send in an assassin. The Commissar's fighters know my shriekers, but nobody knows you. And besides, you don't have a choice, which means you'll see it through to the end. I'm going to need a more serious weapon. Prove that you're useful first. Do this, and Malice will see that you have decent toys to play with but not before. In the meantime, he picks something out of the junk pile. Malice gestures at a container half full of shoddy equipment. I have no interest in killing anyone for you. That's what you think. I'm not even going to punish you for your disobedience. You'll think about it and realize on your own that you won't survive in Kimura without friends. You need shelter, weapons, a healer. 
Now I need what's sitting on the Commissar's shoulders. Bring me his head. And in exchange, I'll share my toys with you. To make surviving Kimura possible. Fair enough. If it's a Commissar, that means he's probably... A human. And also probably a Commissar. So it could be a potential ally. Especially if he's trying to fight back. Ooh, we got stuff. Alright, so an axe. Let's put everything over here in case we need it. Put the axe on, throw on some chainmail. Always keep your eye on the price. A flash of searing pain causes the contents of your skull to burst into flames. Keep your wits about you. Alright, so we have leads on Jai Haidari and Abelard. We also have a quest. I think finding Abelard's more important. Because we could do with a tank. And uh, my skill synchronized better with the melee character. Okay, I'm gonna call it here, and next time we'll begin making our way through the chasm and see if we can't rescue some of our companions. But for now, thanks for watching, and see you guys in the next one.